So what does 24-6 look like in practice? Stop day is about resting, not working, which brings us to the question, what's rest? The simplest definition of rest is to figure out what work is for you and then don't do it. Remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy has traditionally meant that we don't engage in commerce or activities that we take pride in. You'll miss the point of 24-6 if you work at impressing people or God on your stop day. The trick is to allow God the room, the space, and the quiet needed to make an impression on you. Like most great things in life, a weekly day of rest doesn't just happen. In the desert, the Hebrews had to gather extra manna beforehand, and we need to prepare for rest too. My wife Nancy and I have been married for 30 years, and we've established our own Sabbath traditions. The day before our stop day, we usually go to the grocery store so that we have food on hand. We do a liturgical cleaning of the house. It's important that our home is organized because we don't want to be distracted from our rest by unfinished chores. If we plan to go somewhere on a hike on a stop day, I fill up the tank the day before. Nancy has this ritual of finishing up her email and closing her computer. I take off my wristwatch that she gave me 30 years ago. It's a wonderful thing to go to bed on Sabbath night knowing that God's got your back for the next 24 hours. Now, no matter how pressing a deadline is, we don't work on stop days. And I'm not saying that there isn't great temptation, but we don't work on that day. As the saying goes, you gotta stand for something or you'll fall for anything. I particularly enjoy the peace and quiet that settles over our city Sunday mornings. So Nancy and I are often up for a long walk early in the day. On the other hand, if we feel tired, we can roll over and go back to sleep. What do I eat on Sunday morning? Cheerios with milk, frozen peaches, and one scoop of vanilla ice cream works for me. Chocolate, on the other hand, does the trick for Nancy. In general, we don't labor over elaborate meals, although I know that for many families, Sunday dinners are a cherished Sabbath tradition. Well, what about Sabbath with young children? Many parents keep a set of toys, books, and movies that children are allowed to play with only on their stop day. One of our friends makes cinnamon swirl bread and slices it up the night before. She leaves a note that the eight-year-old can read to the younger siblings, and then the kids feed themselves. That way, mom and dad can sleep for an extra hour. For many people, church is the central part of Sabbath. When our kids were younger, we went to the morning service, and then we ate lunch together, and then we took it easy the rest of the day. If you are working or preaching on Sunday, you should shift your Sabbath to another day of the week. 24-6 isn't about which day you keep Sabbath, just so that you keep it one day out of seven. Since these days, I'm often off somewhere preaching on Sundays. Friday is our default stop day. We found that the world is less anxious about getting back to them on Fridays than on Mondays. Some people get anxious when they think about spending time in quiet. They can't imagine going 24 hours without a connection to electronic media. If they disconnect for even an hour, they experience boredom and anxiety. But simply covering boredom and anxiety with distractions and entertainment is a losing battle. What passes for distractions today will need to be escalated tomorrow. I believe that the emotions we experience when we come to a stop are a barometer of our comfort with God. Are we truly bored by being alone with God in the midst of His glorious creation? 
Perhaps it's not God, the times or the world that are pouring. Maybe it's us. Now, I'm not saying that playing games of solitaire or watching golf on TV or using an Xbox is evil or even wrong. But those type of activities need to be balanced with listening to the Lord. When we allow the Lord to be our shepherd, we're led to green pastures and still waters, not a Wi-Fi connection. If you don't take the time to listen, how will you hear what the Lord is saying to you? Deal with boredom. God is on the other side. Now, people have asked me if they can garden on the Sabbath. How about cook a big meal, go jogging? If these activities are restful for you, go for it. If they feel like work or they stress you out, don't. Imagine what it would look like if the whole world came to a stop one day a week. What would it be like if in the heart of the city you could wake up and just hear quiet? What would it sound like if the only noise outdoors on stop day were birds and children laughing? What would it be like if we stayed home more and we were more content with what we had? What would it feel like if your sense of worth wasn't about what you look like or how much you own, but about being a child of God? Stop day is the day when we go from being human doings to human beings. Modern society says that you don't have enough in your life. Thousands of ads attempt to stir up a kind of a discontent. And then our culture tells us that you can have anything and that you deserve it today. The fourth commandment is countercultural. It tells us that we're healthier when we have boundaries. It says that through restraint, we ultimately attain peace. By practicing the Sabbath for a decade, I found that it's one of the best medicines in the world. If you're feeling anxious or stretched too thin, or you're not happy with your relationship with the Lord, try taking a weekly day of rest. I know that it'll change the other six days of your week. Now, a mentor of mine taught me a meditative practice that helps me focus on the intent of 24-6. She spends time every Sunday reflecting on the truth of a passage from the Bible, slowly taking off one word at a time until she comes to a complete rest. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be.